Alright guys, so I put together a wee shell extraction video and thought I'd talk a wee bit about it. This isn't really a step-by-step -step guide or anything like that, it's just a bit of a breakdown of how I decided to go about it, and hopefully you'll find some ideas useful or just interesting in general. All the effects you'll see in this video are just basic 2D compositing with some live-action elements, there's no CGI or anything like that in this. So the military outfit I just got on Amazon. Originally I had a black one, but that didn't stand out very well in the black background, so I decided a tan one would be a lot better and it did stand out quite a bit more. I also went for the military vest, the helmet, and the gloves and such were also camo styled. It is important that when you're going to show a character in uniform that it does come with at least some stuff to sort of bulk up a wee bit so it doesn't just look like a little Halloween costume or something. So all the shells that you see exiting the guns were practical, so I didn't need props for them. But the one for the assault rifle was the 5.56 cartridge. This was a real spent cartridge, and they're pretty cheap to get, and it did the job very well. So for the pistol, I just got a 44 Magnum cartridge. This is a real spent casing. This isn't what would actually exit the gun that I fired, but when you scale it down, it just it worked well enough. And lastly, for the shotgun, I used a 12 gauge BB gun cartridge. I couldn't get my hands on a shell from an actual shotgun, so this would just have to do. You can kind of tell that it's a BB gun magazine kind of thing when it exits, but it did the job good enough. So the first gun I used was the rifle. This is based off an Air 15, but it's actually a paintball gun. I've just modified a few things and put a few things on it, just to, like scopes and such, just to make it seem a wee bit more realistic. So the problem with the assault rifle is the action on the side of it isn't completely realistic. So it does have its dust cover, which is what M4s have, but it's folded up. And because it's not real, I can't fold it down to actually see the bolt, which is the moving part you see when the shells get extracted, so all that would have to be rebuilt in post. So the pistol I used was based off the 1911, this was a gas blowback BB gun, so the action on this is perfect, I didn't need to add on anything in post for that, even though it is a gas blowback gun that can be fired and it can actually cycle like a real gun, I didn't want to do any of that for the video, I just wanted to pretend to fire it and still do all the cycling in post, just so if you don't have the prop that can do that you can still pull this effect off. So the shotgun was much the same as the M4, it did look very good and looked very real except I did have to, in post, change up some of the action on the side of it just to make it look a bit more realistic, but we'll get into that later on in the video. So to get the shell assets, I had to shoot them first. I used the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K to do this with a 19mm lens. So to get the shells spinning, I just put them on top of a turntable, but in order for the shells to sit on the turntable without there being a harsh shadow underneath them, so I did just end up getting a semi-translucent cube, which is meant as an LED light, and once you stick the shells on top of it and you pump enough light into the scene, the light passes through the transparent cube, so even though the shell's sitting on top of it, it doesn't really cast a shadow underneath itself, giving it quite nice even light all around it, which makes it quite a useful asset to use in post. So when I shot these, I did make a point not to shoot it on a green screen, just because when the shells rotate, because they're quite reflective, they will catch some of the light coming from the green screen. This means that when you actually try to key it, it'll just start keying out parts of the shell, which isn't helpful, so I did decide the rotoscoping would be how I would go about that. So to rotoscope the shells, I did use Runway ML again. It did mostly a good job, all I had to do was just click on the shells and it basically did all the work for me. Apart from the shotgun shell, for some reason it gave me a bit of hassle, so I just ended up having to just rotoscope that by hand myself, which honestly didn't take very long. The good thing about rotoscoping these shells is you only have to do one full rotation, and then you can just keep replaying that same footage over and over again, and if you get it just at the right point, you can duplicate the clip over and over and over again, and it'll just rotate forever, so it means you can have these things rotating for as long as you want without having to rotoscope them every single time. So for shooting my main scene, I again shot on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K with that same 19mm lens. So for lighting the scene, I just used a single new LED panel just to light the top of me. I had to make sure that I didn't spill any light on the background because even though I was using a black sheet behind me, if it does catch any light, it becomes quite difficult to make it pitch black without starting to make aspects on me look pitch black, especially since I was holding black guns. So as I'd start to bring the light levels down in post and really crush those blacks, it would start doing the same thing to the guns and they wouldn't show up. So it is important to make it that the black of the black sheet is way, way darker than the black of the guns themselves. So for firing the guns, I would just fake the recoil on my shoulder. An important part of faking recoil is to know that guns don't go up when you recoil, they actually go back into your shoulder. And the reason they appear to go up at times is because it's above your center of mass, so you naturally go like that, you sort of go back and up a wee bit. But the barrels of the guns themselves aren't rising necessarily, it's just where they're placed in your shoulder, so one thing you want to make sure you do is when you're faking this recoil or getting your actors to fake this recoil, have them push the gun forward a wee bit, just a wee bit out of their shoulder, not so much that it's noticeable, but just a wee bit, and have them go back into their shoulder. 
One important thing for the pistol though is I did fire it with the slide forward and with the hammer cocked back, as well as the slide being locked back in my hands. This was just so that I had reference for every single aspect of the moving parts of the gun in different positions for later on. For compositing, I used both After Effects and Premiere, but mostly After Effects. So as I mentioned before, the guns aren't perfect replicas. I did have to replace the action on both the M4 and the Benelli. What I'd do is I'd first gather my assets, so I did get real images of a real M4 and a real Benelli shotgun. So we'll start with the M4. The first thing I did was I just tracked the motion of the M4, because since it is recoiling my hand and it is moving, I do want to essentially paste the action of a real M4 onto the side of mine. So I'd first track that data, both the position and rotation, as the gun is rotating up the way. Once I did that, I could then essentially paste that layer of the real M4 on top of it. Once I'd done that, I can then just feather it and color it and make sure it looks appropriate. And then I pre-compose that in its own layer. So whatever I do in this layer, it will always track the motion of the gun. What I'd do in that pre-composed layer is I'd animate the moving parts of the gun. And as I have the bolt move to the rear, you'd start to see the shell inside the gun get revealed. But just as it comes back to the last moment, it would just disappear. And then what I do is in the main layer, not in the pre-composed layer, I would have the shell essentially reappear in the exact same spot one frame later. So you wouldn't notice that it's changed the layer it's on. This would essentially mean that the shell was no longer attached to the tracking data of the M4, so it can now fly freely out of the gun without tracking its motion. Once I'd done all this, it was just a matter of making sure that the color matched and everything was all right. And for the Benelli, it was exactly the same. It was just track it, paste the action on, pre-compose that, animate that, put the shell in, color it appropriately, and then it was done. For the pistol though, the pistol was a wee bit more complicated because even though I didn't need to gather any external assets, there was a lot more animation involved, quite a bit more compositing as well. So what I'd do first is I would track the data of the pistol firing and rotating just like everything else, except then what i do using that data is mask out the entire top slide of the pistol. This is the part that slides back and forth. This includes the barrel and the hammer, just everything that's above the handle and a couple of other parts. Once that was masked out, I would then use the images I got of the pistol earlier with the slide locked back, revealing the barrel and with the hammer in various positions, pick out the best elements and then essentially paste them where the slide was. But now I can animate each individual element myself. So I pre-compose them and start animating them, including the hammer actually falling onto the firing pin and then the slide moving back and forth. Everything else after that was exactly the same as the M4 and the Benelli. So I'll quickly go over the muzzle flashes. These are just really basic sort of action essential muzzle flashes in some cases. But what I did do is because it's all in slow motion, instead of having the muzzle flashes last one frame like they should, although a lot of people do use two frames, it shouldn't be two frames, it should always be one frame. I got a couple of different muzzle flashes, like some small then getting bigger and bigger and bigger and then sort of dispersing. I had them last about three to five frames. This is just because it was in slow motion. I did want to make it feel like the muzzle flashes were around for a wee bit longer just to give it a wee bit more of that slow style to it. And then on top of all of that, I just added a wee bit of camera shake, a couple of dust particles, and then some smoke, and that was me done. So the sound of guns going off in movies is a strange one because in reality, the sound of a gun is too loud to replicate in a film, because if you really wanted to make it realistic, it would be so loud that no one would want to watch your film and your speakers couldn't produce that sound anyway. We've gotten used to seeing it all the time in films, but like the choice to make a gun sound a certain way is always a stylistic one rather than a real practical one. A lot of the time people will get a sound, it can even be the, a real recorded sound of a gun, but because the mic was set to actually understand that sound and it didn't just blow out the mic, when you put it over your footage, it might be kind of underwhelming. It might seem a little weak and a bit empty. Don't think of it as just the gun going bang. Think of everything we've just seen as all the moving parts of the guns actually work. So you can actually have the sounds of the actual mechanics of the gun working, like the trigger being pulled or the bolt moving back and forward and other things like that, or the shells falling and hitting the ground. You know, things will just fill out the scene a wee bit. So for mine, I just did the cocking sounds of the guns. So for like the pistol, for example, if you cock a pistol back, it goes ch -ch -ch that's actually the same sound that happens every time it fires because the guns essentially recock themselves every time you fire them. So it's good, even if it's just subtle, you can add that in and it does just make the scene seem a bit more lively. And for some of the slower shots, I actually had the sound of the shells pinging out of the gun. So as the shells actually got extracted, you could actually hear them ping off the piece of metal as they were thrown out the side. I just 
pills in the scene a wee bit. So that's that. That's my recent attempt at a shell extraction video. I hope you found it useful, or I hope you found it interesting, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.